So we're here today with Mr. John Sutherland, uh, author of Mad Dogs and Englishman and many other rule set as well. Um, John, could you take us through some of the ideas behind the rules that would make it um, makes it unique in what in what you're trying to achieve? Well, I, th I think my first I, I was always interested in the Indian Mutiny, and there was never a set of rules that really appealed to me. I tried quite a lot of them, um, and when I uh, ran games for uh, foreign, non-English speaking war gamers, the need was to have a, a very quick accessible set of rules that people could pick up in a turn or two and not be bogged down by detail. So I, over the years, probably going back now about 12 years, 10 or 12 years, I refined them and refined them and refined them and tried them out on lots of people and probably tried them out on uh, 20 or 30 different nationalities. Um, which was a great crash test for them, really. And, and this is the War Games Holiday Centre. Yeah, it, that's right. That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we we ran that for about six or seven years, um, and it was very it was very successful with you know uh, predominantly overseas war gamers. Um, so when uh, when I ceased running that, um, I talked to Dave Ryan at Caliber, and he was interested in a set of colonial rules with a slight difference. You know, not not the not the run of the mill kind of stuff because. I, I'm, I'm very much into the game rather than the uh, trying to recreate a, a battle in minute detail. Um, you know, so it, it's a social thing. I, I always think it's a social thing, and it's a chance for people to get around a table and have a laugh and have, have some fun. And that, that's really why the, the rules have kind of yeah. coalesced into what they are now. Okay, so it's fast play. Very much so. Uh, yeah. Large scale skirmish, or yeah. I, 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 mean, it, I, I mean, this is the age old problem, isn't it, that everybody has? Is, is when you start a, a new period, you start with the best intentions of keeping it under control, and you never do. So, what I intended to have two or three hundred figures, maybe tops. I've now got about five and a half thousand in that period, and I've never got around to rebasing them. So, I needed to come up with a, a viable solution to be able to play large-scale skirmishes with singly based figures which you know didn't take me a, an eternity to, to play and move so that's how these kind of evolved so and, and I can recognize that in a lot of people mm. so um, talking about it being fast play and this large-scale yeah. skirmish stuff um, how is it I mean you know, if you would had to explain how it's become fast play We've been using D6s and D10s and things yeah. like that, yeah. and you've been cross-referencing on charts, but those charts seem easy to use. Is that the, 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 the elegance of it, really? Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. I mean, you, you, you either uh, begin with the premise that you either do something or you don't do something. Uh, once you have done something, there's only two things that, that come out of that. You either kill something or you inflict a degree of terror on it. And the more terror a unit gets, the, the, the more brittle it becomes and the more prone it is to taking a retrograde step or running off the table or not performing as well as you'd like it to. Um, and and there's, a, there's a variable movement distance as well yeah, for so the units. Yeah, I, I, I like that idea because um, having read so many accounts of, of battles, it, you, you n you're never completely aware of how long a battle's actually taken or how, a, how long a sequence is taking. So I thought, wouldn't it be interesting and, and much more challenging not to know how far your men were going to go? So, so you, I mean, if, if a unit moves 3D six inches, you could move between three inches and eight, 18 inches. Mm -hmm. And I think that's quite challenging and I think mm. that's quite interesting. Do you think that sort of turns, that, that sort of movement, uh, varied movement, also builds an element of what happens during actual battles as well, in that yeah. one minute everybody's all fired up, ready to go, then they're tired, and then whatever else, or they come across an unknown t terrain feature or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I and mean, I think you found that with one of your units yeah, yeah, on, yeah, the, on, yeah. on the battlefield, yeah. uh, the, the O'Neill's uh, Blue Caps, that they, 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 they consistently threw extremely low dice and, and were very slow in getting it's into the fight. It's entirely their fault. But once they did get into the fight, they were really good. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. You know, and and I think, yeah, that's you. You can vary that a little bit. You can enhance enhance the the uh, the movement by by using the cards, which um, which is another major yeah, so, element. So of what's the, that? So one of the things I liked in particular, yeah, was the fact that we had leaders who could do a certain amount of uh, motivate or activate a certain amount of units. Yeah, but also it was a variable turn sequence. So every leader had a card. Yes. 
and we pulled out a car to do that. But then you've added in a, a wonderful little card system. Yeah, I, what, what, what I've done, a, a, leader, a leader effectively has a number of different functions. Uh, it, it, it has uh, a leadership range, you know, which, is, which determines how far away a unit can be for him to be able to influence it. The number of units or actions it, that, that the leader can take in a particular turn, which can be to order a unit to fire, to move, or to take some terror off a unit perhaps, or to rally the troops, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and also, uh, th those, the, the, the quality of the commander also determines the number of cards you get at the beginning of the game, um, between, uh, between three and six cards. Um, and then you receive replacement cards for routing an enemy unit or beating them in combat or mm -hmm. those or killing an enemy and what commander. What do those cards do? They, they 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 can do a variety of things. You they, they 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 basically fall into two categories. You either play them against, play them against the enemy, which might slow them down or put some dust in front of their faces before they fire a volley. Um, could, um, make them uh, take a terror, terror, a, a, a morale test or add terror to the unit or something like that or you played them against your own, play them on your own unit basically to give them a, a temporary advantage, make them move faster, make them more aggressive in, in melee, make them fire faster mm. or that kind of thing. Mm. And that was a that was a little uh, that was a, a fun bit that I, I enjoyed. Yeah, I, yeah, it's it's it, because uh, if if you're using the card, if you use the cards at the right time, you can have a really it can have an absolutely devastating effect, and it will tear a great big hole in the enemy line. Um, and and then you then then ultimately you will find your units getting a little bit isolated, but. But uh, yeah, that does happen. And one of the things we were talking about is that the, the, the rule book, which you've got in your hand. I have, there we I go. have, yes. Also, it, it looks at the Indian Mutiny, but it, it covers other conflicts as well. Yeah, I, I, initially, um, initially it was for the Indian Mutiny, and, uh, but I, uh, very early on I did uh, extend it out to the Anglo-Zulu War as well. Um, but I, I, I recognise that Indian Mutiny is perhaps not as mainstream as, 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 I'd quite like, as I'd quite like it to be. There are some lovely figure ranges, um, I, I must admit. Um, and uh, so what I've done is I, I've, I've gone into the into allied kind of periods. So it runs anything from about 1840-odd, so you know the Sikh Wars, that kind of thing, all the way up to the Boer War. Um, so it's, so it's, it's about the back, the back 50 or 60 years of the 19th mm. century. So you've got a, a number of army lists in the actual book itself. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Will there be any extra army lists for us yeah, to, uh, to get Yeah, the, 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 the intention is for us to do um, some Theatre Pacific stuff. So there, there'll be a mixture of scenarios, more detail on the, on the armies and the composition and that kind of thing. And we're going to design a, a, a range of um, bespoke cards for different theatres. So. Um, that the cards that we were using today had very much an Indian mutiny flavour, um, you know, and, and, and we're talking about mutineers and, and, and corn poor massacre and all that kind of stuff. So, so it was very focused on that. So obviously with the Anglo-Zulu War, there'll, there'll be slightly different kind of mixture of cards, basically to give a lot more um, sense of the period and a lot more kind of uh, flavour of the period and flavour of the theatre. Okay, well, thanks very much, John. That's great. Thanks it's very pleasure. much. Pleasure. Thank thanks. you. If you have come to this video from WI Interactive, then you will be able to read the accompanying article on screen. WI Interactive is the iPad version of War Games Illustrated, the world's premier tabletop gaming magazine. It features video and other interactive content in every issue. Find out more by following the link.